Hello everyone, welcome back to another time lapse video. This time I'm doing something a little different than a build series. Recently I found a guide on Steam which detailed how to import and render Stormworks models in Blender. This combined with my previous experience with the image editor GIMP meant I could try to create some cool looking realistic artworks like these. In today's video I've got a submitted model from SimpleMark. Thank you so much for letting me use your creation. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work in Stormworks, but it'll do perfectly for this project. So without any more hesitation, let's start creating. The first and most important thing to do is to find the background image for the render of the spaceship to be placed on. Usually I take most of my photos from sites like Pixabay, they're completely free and high quality of course. Once I've settled on the landscape, we're also going to have to at least somewhat match the lighting in said landscape to the lighting on our spaceship. I'm going to search for something called an HDRI, or High Dynamic Range Image. This is going to give us the reflections and light tone we need to match our landscape. I'm going to open up Blender and after a few minutes of refusing to work, it's finally going to load in the Oregon spaceship. That's what it's called by the way. Great. Let's start with the shading. First, I'm using this small script, which can be found in the Steam tutorial, to select all the windows and make them a separate material from the rest of the body. This material will be glass, which I'm going to make reflective and translucent to match the real look. Perfect. Now it's time to open the HDRI file we downloaded earlier and match the orientation of the organ to the light source. Then we can make the background transparent and match the camera properties and hit render. To liven up this picture a bit, I'm going to use a second render of the organ at a different angle than the first to try and show some depth. I'll render that one out as well. Now this is where the fun starts. When GIMP opens, the first thing I'm going to do is tweak the background image. The sky is a bit dull at the top and we can fix that with another, more vibrant space picture from Pixabay. After blending it all together, I think it's already starting to look cooler. To spice up the sky even more, I'm adding a sci-fi glowing moon on top of that boring old one. There. Now I'm happy with the way that looks. Finally, let's populate this unknown planet with our two renders of the Oregon. One of which is going to be more in the distance to show some scale, and the other one is right here in front of us. Right now, the two spaceships still look a little strange compared to the rest of the image. That's where the Curves tool comes in. We can use it to more or less match the blue lighting and contrast of the ships to the background. The smaller ship is far enough away that we need to be able to see its shadow. I'm just mirroring a copy of it and then blurring the darkened version over the landscape. To add a bit more realism, the stretch tool lets us shape the shadow to the surrounding mountains. After the shadow, it makes sense that we add some highlights. Let's start again on the smaller ship and draw some light blue lines where the exhausts of the heaters are. And to make them come to life, I added a more faded large glow around them. I'm going to do the same thing for the large spaceship. This time though we can see the heaters in much more detail, so I need to cut out vertical lines in each blue glow. Then applying some white glow and finally the even bigger blue glow around every thruster. We can also make the jet exhausts look more realistic as well. Instead of using a light blue color, I'm using a dark orange to show the buildup of heat on these nozzles. And to show the light reflecting off the surface of the ship, we can add some white glow around the left side of the big ore again. I'm also creating that same orange glow on the jets of the smaller spaceship. Next, I'll add a blue circle around the smaller ship to make it look like it has some sort of force field going around it. 
The trick is with this to use a ton of motion blur and it ends up looking very subtle, but also very nice. Obviously the same force field needs to be applied to the other ship. The motion blur effect is very slow, so it takes some time to preview. Once the effect has been applied, I still need to correct the orientation a bit to make sure that the force field cylinder is pointing in the same direction as the ship. When that's done, I still need to trim away the part that's in front of the ship, which we shouldn't be able to see. To add a little more realism, I wanted to add smoke to the top of the spaceships. That way it would appear as they were heating up or pumping out some sort of gas from the systems inside. Either way, when I fit the smoke onto the ships, the result was quite cool looking. I trimmed away any parts that were not meant to be seen, as well as fading out the start and end. Since I already started adding smoke, I thought why not add some ambient fog in front of the picture to make it appear as though you're looking through it. This effect looked especially good when I slapped the linear light filter on it. Next, I added some clouds to the inside of the mountain range on the right. I tried doing the same thing by adding clouds to the other valleys, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the clouds to look good or realistic. Even with some curves and shadows, nothing seemed to look good, so I gave up on the idea. I left the cloud on the right though, because that one looked fine. I tried one more time with the cloud by fitting it into the corner and playing with the curves to make it more transparent. It looked better and added some more depth into the scene. To start finalizing the image, I needed to darken the sides of the spacecraft that were not facing the moon for more contrast. Some artifacts around the ships were also added to beef up their force fields. This took a while to blur as well, but it's all worth it in the end. There were only a few things left to do, one of them being to blur the entire bodies of the spaceships to create the effect of movement, or like they just came out of hyperspace or something, I don't know, use your imagination. Now I pre-composed the image into one and tweaked the curves a little to get the final look I wanted, which was a little more contrasty with an even bluer tone. At last but not least, the same picture from way back when I edited the sky could be used to add some glowing particles to the foreground. From here, just a matter of adding text, choosing the font and style. I really like the whole motion blur aesthetic throughout the rest of the picture, so I used that in the text as well. Adding the credits was done in the same way, and adding a lens flare and vignette was the last touch up the image needed. And voila, here it is. I want to give another thank you to Simple Mark for his creation. This thing looks really, really cool, and I hope to see it in the game someday. I liked how this image turned out in general. Some of my favorite parts were the smoke, the ambient cloud layer, and the motion blurred text. Hopefully you all liked this style of video, and if you did, make sure to let me know because I would be thrilled to do more of these. If you want to submit a creation, the link to my Discord server will be in the description. Aside from that, thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.